This boss uses the powers of the elements, and this fight uses giant laser discs. Today, we're making customized boss fights in Mario 3D World because the original fights are a snooze fest. I really love the concept of the King Kathunk fight, but the actual gameplay is pretty boring. My first order of business was to give Kathunk a fresh coat of green paint to match the enemies I intend to use. After experimenting with a few different ideas, I had an epiphany. Why not add spike enemies to the mix to throw cylinders of pain? I strategically placed the spike enemies at the edges of platforms, high enough so they couldn't be defeated, but close enough so that the needle rollers would land in the arena. This made the fight even more challenging as Mario had to dodge both King Kathunk and the new inward rolling obstacles. Each time Kathunk takes damage, he gets faster and two platforms fall, giving Mario less space to maneuver. Taking that into account, I place the rollers on the platforms on the only four permanent ground areas to increase the danger. The rollers shatter when hitting each other, but they don't always break at the same spot or time. Strangely, if Kathunk flops down while they're rolling, the rollers pause until he rises again, and then resume as if nothing happened. I tried to keep it fair by having the spikes throw the rollers at the same time and consistently enough for Mario to anticipate the hazards. Overall, the encounter feels balanced, but it's definitely much harder than the original fight due to the precise timing and dodging required. The boss roller is a solid idea for a boss fight, but the original design was so easy that even Goombas were laughing at it. Why does he have three minions that Mario can use to defeat him? I nixed two of them and added a couple of boos instead. To up the ante even more, I tossed in some Typhoos to really blow the competition away. They're positioned just outside the arena to give Mario some serious wind resistance training. If he's not careful, those gusts can push him right into Boss Broller's fiery embrace. Or worse, they could send him on a one-way trip to the Lava Trail Express. I gave the Boss Broller some white color to show his white-hot flame power and his newfound friendship with Boos and Typhoos. The lighter color helps him stand out against the darker background. At first, this battle felt like it may be too tough, but once Mario masters the rhythm, it's not that bad. Just wait for the wind to die down, grab your ammo, and go to town on that boss roller. With a little luck, Mario might even make it out with his mustache intact. The creative design of the Prince Bully fight feels like wasted potential. To spice things up, I wanted to find something to temporarily cover up those clear pipes. First, I tried thwomps hoping they would block the pipes when smashing down, but when I booted up the game, they didn't even appear on the screen. Next, I tried giant brick blocks. They functioned the way that I wanted them to, but it felt like they took up way too much space in the arena. To solve this, I put those blocks on a diet so they still cover the pipes up without crowding the battleground. I added needle traps to the center of the arena to make sure that Mario couldn't just stand and watch the fight. I also added a bomb cannon above Prince Bully to shoot soccer ball bombs into the arena at Mario. These bombs can either help or hurt Mario, depending on how he chooses to use them. I made Prince Bully's armor a bronze copper color to show off his regal status and to match the blocks and needle traps. Overall, I'm thrilled with how this fight turned out. The needle traps were a difficult timing element to navigate around. The blocks ended up being great obstacles to make Mario plan to uncover each pipe or to carefully navigate the bully into the open ones. If Mario is big, he can break the blocks himself, which is a nice reward for not taking any damage. But if he's small, he'll have to use the soccer bombs to open the pipes, which adds another layer of challenge. But hey, that's life. Sometimes you're big, sometimes you're small, and sometimes you're getting hit by soccer bombs. Ah, the boom boom fight. I mean, sure, it's a classic, but if we're being honest, it's about as fun as watching paint dry. To make things more interesting, I decided to add ring burners. Now Mario will have a harder time than just pressing a single button to step on Boom Boom's empty skull. When trying to change his color blue, I accidentally made Boom Boom invisible during most of his attacks. This happy accident made it way harder to know exactly where Boom Boom was at all times. I tried using some ghost enemies, but it just didn't feel right, so instead I brought in boxes for Boom Boom to bounce off of and make the fight feel less predictable. At first, it accidentally made Boom Boom super easy to attack, which was not the vibe I was going for. So I spread them out and deleted half of the boxes. Right when the fight starts, Mario takes damage from the ring burners, which is perfect to ensure that he can't take any more damage in the fight. The boxes became safe zones on the outskirts of the arena, forcing Mario to commit to attacking. And he can ground pound the boxes to destroy them, open up the arena, and make everything more visible. This is the first time I've ever felt any sort of challenge fighting against Boom Boom, and now I can never go back. 
Man, the design behind Pom Pom is cool. A boss that splits into several decoys with one true enemy. This would be so awesome if the execution was done better. My first idea was to introduce some spiked rollers that spin in a circle, but apparently I got a little bit carried away. Poor Mario never even had a chance. So I dialed it back to be more reasonable by having just one set of rollers that go around Pom Pom. To beef up the battleground, I added some hexagonal ground tiles and threw in some lava hexagons for some extra spice. I lifted them up to create different layers of height and then added some ice tiles to make it extra challenging to keep your footing while dodging ninja stars left and right. But wait, there's more. I also added some normal hexagons at a different height, hoping that Pom Pom's clones would spawn on top of these. Just like with Boom Boom, I changed Pom Pom's color and made it a dark purple. And as I hoped, she suddenly became invisible until she splits, making it way harder for Mario to score an easy hit. All in all, the new and improved Pom Pom Arena is pretty sweet. The new vertical element with the hexagons added a whole new layer of platforming challenges to an otherwise stale encounter. Sometimes the crafty little ninja would even hide in between or slightly inside the hexagons, forcing me to actually use my brain and figure out which one was the real deal. I never really liked the histocrat fight. It feels like a lot of waiting around for something to happen, and that just never felt fun to me. So I decided to give the old histocrat a little makeover. The original fight is too forgiving, so I felt compelled to make my version extra crazy. First, I had some cannon boxes at different heights to match where Mario might be standing on each plate snake. But that wasn't enough for me. I wanted something in the arena to really give Mario a run for his money. I liked the idea of Fuzzies patrolling the arena in a train to block Mario. I made sure to reconfigure the route so that it was predictable, but not a cakewalk. To add some more flavor, I dressed up the Queen Histocrat in black with a red cape to match the Fuzzies and Cannonball reinforcements. The fight definitely took some endurance to beat. Mario could turn a weakness into a strength by using the cannons or cannonballs to gain some height. And the fuzzies worked well because they would hide behind the boss and then pop out when Mario would least expect it. Gaining the cap power up was still super helpful for progress, but it was way trickier to keep it this time. I'm happy to say that this version of the fight felt way more satisfying and rewarding to beat. Oh, Motley Boss Blob. One minute, he's a harmless little jester and the next he turns into the stuff for my nightmares. Naturally, I'm here to amplify that terror. I wanted to find a way to slow Mario down if he's careless, so I decided to bring in moving water blocks. I tried to add kamiks to add projectiles, so I placed them outside the arena, but unfortunately, that did not work, so I went back to the drawing board. Then, I had a stroke of genius. The fight was too easy if Mario just ran around the edges while boss blobs butt slammed away, so I thought, why not make the outside of the circle more deadly? Enter the conch doors, those menacing, beak-smashing flamingo things. They only trigger if Mario comes close, and they make the outer region of the battle arena a risky place to be. Plus, their color scheme matched Motley's jester form, so it was a match made in nightmare heaven. If you're feeling particularly thorough, you can destroy the conch doors for bonus points, or if you want to be speedy, you can just ignore them altogether. It's like a choose your own adventure book Mario style. The water was actually really tough when trying to run away from the giant hopper. One millisecond of slowdown and he can catch Mario and smash him. All in all, the Motley Boss Blob fight is one that'll make you break out in a cold sweat, but hey, that's what makes it so darn fun. I saved Bowser for the very end because I knew I could make it epic. The car fight has different areas with unique challenges, and I wanted to take each area to the next level. In phase one of the fight, I wanted to bring the heat. I placed some fire piranha plants on the outsides of the track, making it very unlikely Mario would want to go attack them. I adjusted their position to make sure the fireballs would be right in line with Mario. Then I added these spiky orbs on the track as well as something for Mario to have to jump over. I varied the amount of orbs and their formations so it wouldn't be as easy to predict. Phase two, I wanted Mario to get hammered. I placed hammer bros up high on hard blocks to throw hammers down and wing dry bones on the track. The hammer bros ensured that Mario would need to keep moving at all times and keep the pace of the encounter pretty quick. Dry bones slowly fly towards Mario and can be dodged if Mario can see them quick enough. As for phase three, it's time for pure destruction. I added cat bullet bills as homing missiles to follow Mario along the track. I brought back the icy floor pieces and placed them in different groupings and at different areas, hoping he would slip up. 
This fight was way harder than I anticipated, and I spent a lot longer than I want to admit fighting Bowser. I really liked the variety in this fight and the challenge to balance many elements at once. I didn't expect Bowser's soccer bombs to explode the spiky orbs, but it actually made it tougher to make sure the ball hit Bowser. Check out more customized bosses by clicking on the screen right now. Please subscribe so Nintendo will hire me. I'm Aristotle and thanks for watching.